Hi there, Thack here. Video three. We are well into the process now. Uh, so I need to anneal my piece of brass again. It's starting to work hard. So I'm going to start out with the annealing and then we'll get back into the whole repose process. So you have to be very careful when you're heating up the brass. You want to get some color in there, but it's very easy to go a second too far and the whole piece of brass will deteriorate on you and you'll destroy it. So uh, this becomes ever more important the farther you get into this process. So I'm just bringing it up till I see some color there and then moving it around in the forge on the hot spot there just to get a nice even heat over the entire surface. I'm not sure if you're picking up that color on the camera there, but I'm just gonna quench that now. So for the copper-based metals, you heat it up and quench it, and that is what anneals it. Um, for steel, you would just heat up the steel and then let it air cool. You would not quench it then. That would case hard enough to be the opposite of what you want to achieve. But with copper-based metals, you heat it up, quench it, and then it's annealed and it's super soft at this point and ready for more work. So let's get over to the anvil now and I need to do some more um, hammering on that. So as I mentioned in the last video, um, things started out looking pretty encouraging and it seemed to be taking shape. But then as I started putting some more of the depth in there to get those different transitions, it ended up getting pretty ugly at this point here. And oftentimes during the process, I'll get to the point where I look at it and my first impulse is that it's, um, it's overwhelming. It's like, I don't know how to fix this. And you're not really sure how to proceed. So when I get into those situations, I always just take a look and try to dial in my detail into something very specific and look at just one portion and, and think to myself, okay, I can't solve the entire um, sculpture in one breath here, but what can I do to make it incrementally better? What is one little area I can focus on? And I, typically, I tend to work from the center out or from the high spot down to the lower spot. So th that's usually my approach. Um, and in this case, with the nose being the, our center point, that works out quite well. It's it's the high spot and the center point pretty much. It's at the bottom of the, the center there. So I'm going to look at that. If I look at this thing sideways here, I'm not sure if I'm getting that right there. You can see I need to get this um, dented, damaged look here into something a little bit more um, of a consistent taper. So that's what I'm gonna start with. So first off, I'm just gonna go to the anvil and set this on. I'm gonna work from the inside and get some of these wrinkles out. So I'm gonna go down to the anvil surface and start there. So just pounding out those dents and irregularities, and now this is becoming more of a even taper, like the clay piece there. So I'm just gonna try to even out some of the anomalies right here, take it back to more of a geometric um, consistency, and then from there we can start going back to sculpting it again. At the same time, I'm still trying to cheat out a little bit more depth on the tip of the nose. Okay, so I'm making things a little blocky, but I'm at least establishing my symmetry a little bit cleaner right now. And that is making me happy. You can bring out a little bit here. Okay, so let's get back in with the Sharpies here and just get some more lines put in here for reference. Go back to my center line again.
Okay, so I've got some more references there now. I think I can go back to my steak and just start sharpening up some of this detail. Okay, so making progress. Um, finally, things are starting to take shape. You can see, I, I don't know, can you see? Looking pretty good as far as the depth. This one might be a tad shallower, but uh, I still need to sharpen up a few things here. Uh, but I'm basically, I think at the point where this, my little clay, my cat, has become um, redundant or useless. I've now achieved the same level of detail on the brass here. So I'm just gonna move forward with that from here on in. I'm going to move from the outside. I was just working on the outside. Going to move to the inside, sharpen up a couple details, and then we should redraw the lines on it and get in with some chisels. At least that's the game plan at this point. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants if we're gonna be perfectly honest right now. So. Here we go. So one final anneal, soften it up, and then I'm gonna come out with a Sharpie, redraw my lines, and then get into the surface with some chisels and try to refine the detail a bit. So in the interest of keeping this a simple starter tutorial, I'm not gonna put a whole lot of more detail in here, uh, but we're gonna do another pass of me drawing in the features and then coming in with the chisel and sharpening it up and just let, let's see how much detail we can get in a fairly short amount of time. I'm just working on doing the profile right now, coming in with a dull, cold chisel, and just working on the flat of my stump. I'm also using my body to push against. So I'm hitting very lightly. Brass is quite soft, and if you're using copper, it would be the same thing if it's not um, overly work hardened. So it's quite easy to do too much, dint it too far, or even cut right through. So you have to use proper discretion when you're hitting at this point. Especially when you get into the sharper chisels. You can do too much damage if you're uh, not careful. So on the nose, I use the chisel to define where the actual snout, the nose part is there. And then I've come in with my raising hammer and I just move that whole plane down. So you've got a de delineated line, but I'm moving this whole area back slightly just to, to get a change in plane. Okay, I'm purposely not putting a whole lot of detail in. I'm trying to keep this as bare bones or crude or as fast as possible here. I just wanna start uh, delineating the eyes a little bit because they tend to be 
probably one of the more fiddly pieces. Now let's be honest, the eyes are going to be the toughest part. So just drop it down with my little curved chisel there. I'm going to come in with something much sharper now and start working that in very gingerly. So as I'm dropping this in here, it's deforming in way too deep. Now I'm going to go from the other side and actually with the ball, I want to push out the eyeball part of it. And we'll see what sort of effect we will get. And I don't know if you can make that out, but it's basically, it's coming out where you've got a little bit of a bulge where the eyeball actually would be. So I just need to do a little bit more fooling around to get this to look conceivable, but we're getting pretty close. And then I have to go over and make the other side symmetrical to it, which is gonna be the tricky part. So here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna call it at this point. Uh, still tons and tons of room for refinement on this, but um, I think we've captured just the general idea anyway, and I just wanna to try to illustrate um, as crudely as possible what uh, we're going for as far as sculpting and getting that repose action to happen for you here. So we'll come back for one final video and we'll do some finishing on this and I'll just talk a little bit more about that. Um, but basically, if you guys can get your piece up to this level, um, I think you should be quite happy and then if you want to spend more time you can certainly do that. Uh, I, I would think I put in probably about a little over an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes as far as from start to finish on the actual sculpting of this. So that's not a heck of a lot of time and if I were to double that time I could certainly refine a lot more detail on there. But uh, anyway, that's good for today. We will come back in our next video and finish this whole thing off. Thanks for coming out. Yeah.